What if I tell you Emmanuel Macron is gay and has someone who loves him so much? Are you shocked? Well, that should not be such bizarre news as people are taking pride in gayism. But where did this all come from all of a sudden? The French first lady broke the news. How did she know? Who is the secret gay lover? We will answer all your questions, so watch until the end of the video. Hello and welcome to the channel. A daily dose of a world leader cocktail brought straight to you. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. Emmanuel Macron is a French banker and politician elected president of France in 2017. Macron was the fifth republic's first president to be elected without the support of either the socialists or the Gaullists, and he was France's youngest head of state since Napoleon I. He was re-elected in 2022, making him the first French president in two decades. However, his personal life has been in the spotlight throughout his political career, with his marriage being the talk of the town. Macron is married to Brigitte Tronu, 25 years his senior, and has always been by his side through his ups and downs. Notably, when Macron married Tronu in 2007, she already had three children from her previous marriage to André Louis Ozier. In June 1974, Tronu married André. Emmanuel Macron is the stepfather of Tronu and André's three adult children. So recently, someone has called the French First Lady and spilled a secret. According to reports, Brigitte Macron received an anonymous phone call alleging that her president husband, Emmanuel Macron, had a gay lover. Despite strict security measures and all of her devices, a tormentor called the 68-year-old and said, I know your husband is right now with a man. Political commentator Nicolas Brissett claims in a new documentary titled In the Hell of Presidential Campaigns, which airs on BFM, France's most popular television news channel. It comes after several scandalous rumors about the couple's personal life, including claims that Ms. Macron was born a man. President Macron, then 15, walked into Brigitte's 39-year-old high school literature class in Amiens, France in 1993. Brigitte later divorced her husband, with whom she has three children to marry Mr. Macron. Senator Francois Patriot of Mr. Macron's En Mosh party confirmed that Ms. Macron was devastated by the phone call, alleging her 44-year-old husband was having an affair. Mr. Patriot claims Ms. Macron later told friends, Do you realize what they dare to say? Nothing will spare us. I was saddened and shocked to hear that, but we will continue. The Macron's 24-year age difference has always been a source of contention, especially since they began dating when Emmanuel Macron was still a schoolboy in their hometown of Amiens in northern France. His affair with Miss Macron, who was then a married teacher and mother of three, caused a scandal. But the couple has remained together ever since. President Macron described the affair in his book and political manifesto Revolution as a love often clandestined, often hidden misunderstood by many before imposing itself. The Macrons married in the Channel Beach Resort of La Tuque in 2007, but not before causing great consternation among those closest to them. According to the documentary, Miss Macron has been hurt by criticism about her fashion sense since becoming the First Lady in 2017. Miss Macron's confidant Gael Takalov told the program that even the candidate's team was not a fan of hers, and I could hear them talking about it saying, she mustn't show herself too much. She can damage our candidate's image. Ms. Chakalov claimed that Ms. Macron's aides thought she was too brushed, too cross-legged, wearing too much makeup, too much of a bimbo. Last month, Ms. Macron's lawyers filed a lawsuit over false claims that she is a transgender woman who was born a man. After a far-right publication published baseless rumors in December, conspiracy theorists attacked Ms. Macron on social media. Despite these allegations, Mr. Macron remains the overwhelming favorite to be re-elected president of France in April. According to the most recent Ipsos Sopra Stereo Opinion poll, he received 26% of the vote in the first round, far ahead of his nearest rival, national rally candidate Marine Le Pen, who received 17%. Mr. Macron was only 16 when he declared his love for his drama teacher, Mrs. Brigitte Ozier. André Louis Ozier, her first husband, left the family home in Amiens to live in Lille. Brigitte Tronu is a family member who owns a French chocolate conglomerate. 
Jean is her father's name and Simone is her mother's. Tron Yu also has five siblings, the youngest of whom she is. After her marriage, she was thrust into the spotlight when former US President Donald Trump praised her for being in great shape. It's worth noting that while Brigitte's daughter shared a classroom with Emmanuel Macron, her son Sebastian is two years his senior. Furthermore, the French president is the stepfather to his wife's seven grandchildren. On the other hand, President Macron has no biological children with Tronyu. Emmanuel is 44 years old, while France's first lady is 68. Let's talk about Macron's career. Macron began his public career as a finance inspector for the French Ministry of Economy and Finance in 2004. Four years later, he paid 50,000 euros to buy out of his government contract to enter the private sector, which France warned would jeopardize any future political ambitions. As an investment banker, he joined Rothschild and Seabank, the French division of the international Rothschild Financial Group in September 2008. Macron rose quickly through the company ranks, and in 2012, he facilitated Nestle's $12 billion acquisition of Pfizer's baby food division. Macron joined Hollande's administration as deputy chief of staff and economic advisor after Hollande was elected president. Macron became the face of France at international summits, and he was appointed finance minister in 2014. He promoted a reform package known as the Loi Macron to revive the flagging French economy, but the legislation sparked a revolt from the Socialist Party's left wing. In February 2015, Prime Minister Manuel Valls was forced to invoke Article 49 of the French Constitution. This rarely used provision allows a bill to pass without the consent of Parliament in exchange for the government facing a vote of confidence. Valls easily won the vote, and the Macron law was passed. As a result, restrictions on doing business on Sundays were relaxed, and some professions were deregulated, but the labor market was largely ineffective and France's 35-hour workweek was preserved. The Loi Macron was a modest reform package for a country grappling with persistently high unemployment and slow growth, but it sparked a fierce backlash from both the left and the right. Following the launch of Enmarche, Macron's relationship with Hollande became increasingly strained, but this was hardly a liability given the president's single-digit public approval ratings. Macron resigned on August 30, 2016, and formally declared his presidential candidacy on November 16, 2016. Later that month, the Republicans chose former Prime Minister François Fillon as their nominee, tipping the campaign in Macron's favor. In the intra-party race, Fillon defeated former President Nicolas Sarkozy and former Prime Minister Alain Juppé. Fillon was widely regarded as the likely front-runner in the presidential election. Still, his campaign imploded amid allegations that he created bogus jobs for his family members and improperly accepted tens of thousands of euros in gifts. Hollande announced in December 2016 that he would not seek re-election because he saw no realistic path to a second term. Valls resigned as prime minister and declared his candidacy, but the socialists chose Benoit Hamoun as their nominee, a political outsider from the party's far left wing. Valls and Juppé, representing their party's moderate factions, later declared their support for Macron, a significant coup for a candidate who lacked major party support. Because of historically low support for France's two major parties, their race effectively became a three-way contest between Macron, Le Pen, and Jean-Luc Mélenchon, a former socialist who ran for president in 2012 with the support of the French Communist Party. On April 23, 2017, French voters went to the polls for the first round of the presidential election, and Macron won with 24% of the vote, topping a field of 11 candidates. Le Pen finished second with 21% of the vote, ensuring her a spot in the second round two weeks later. Fillon and Mélenchon finished in a virtual tie for third place, each with about 20% of the vote, while Hamoun was a distant fifth with just over 6%. For the first time in the Fifth Republic's history, Neither of France's two major parties was represented in the runoff. Just days before the event, hackers leaked tens of thousands of internal Macron campaign communications to the public in an apparent attempt to sway the election. The attack was attributed to the same Russian-backed group that targeted the Democratic Party during the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Still, the impact of the so-called Macron leaks information dump was minimal. 
thanks partly to French media laws prohibiting campaign coverage in the hours before an election. When legislative elections were held in June 2017, a march easily won 308 of the 577 seats in the National Assembly. Macron's coalition commanded 350 seats with the addition of Francois Bayrou's Democratic Movement. Despite a stunning performance for a party that had only been in existence for 14 months, turnout was only 42.6%, the lowest rate of voter participation in a parliamentary election in modern French history. Despite his administration's largely effective response to the pandemic, Macron's approval rating consistently hovered around 40%, and the results of the 2021 regional elections reflected his low polling numbers. A marsh failed to win a single region while resurgent Republicans and Socialists ruled the country. Another record low turnout occurred in that election, with only one-third of all eligible voters voting. During the 2022 presidential campaign, voter apathy persisted, and Macron struggled to rally his remaining supporters. The first round, held on April 10, 2022, was a virtual repeat of the 2017 election, with Macron receiving nearly 28% of the vote and Le Pen receiving 23%. Mélenchon came in third place with 22% of the vote, and while he did not fully endorse Macron in the second round, he urged his supporters to not give a single vote to Le Pen. Macron won a second term with more than 58% of the vote in the April 24 runoff. Besides the fact that Macron is a successful businessman and a politician, he still has some pretty dark secrets that may come out anytime soon. Until then, we wish him the best of luck, and may he have strong ties with the rest of the world. What do you think about Emmanuel? Let us know in the comments section. That's it for today. We will see you at the next one. Goodbye.